So to tie back in what we've been trying to do over the past few videos, we constructed the general form of the scattering stationary states that would solve the time independent Schrodinger equation for our scattering problem. And we developed a way of uh, expressing any wave function in terms of these partial waves that are uh, spherical waves in general. In the last video, we uh, constructed the representation of our incident uh, plane wave. So this is the first term is the incident wave. In this video, we're going to generalize that to build a representation of our scattered wave. And mathematically, the reason for that, this is, uh, so the interest in expressing this one in terms of partial waves is first of all, this wasn't in spherical coordinates for one thing. And secondly, it wasn't in the form of a spherical wave that decayed inversely with the distance. Uh, in this case, we already have the correct radial form, but we lack a representation of the scattering amplitude. And using the fact that the Legendre polynomials, PL cosine theta, form a complete and orthonormal basis set over the interval minus one and one, so over the interval that uh, of cosine theta, we can express any function of theta as the linear superposition of these polynomials. In this case, the azimuthal dependence is gone by the, uh, the spherical symmetry of our potential. So in principle, if we can determine uh, the correct coefficients given uh, the form of the scattering amplitude, we can find its representation in terms of the Legendre polynomials. For later convenience, uh, we're going to re-express this coefficient as 2L plus 1 AL PL cosine of theta, then it, uh, it'll become clear later on why uh, we're choosing this form. So uh, in this case then, our scattering uh, or the wave function representing the scattered particles which was given by this Okay, so this portion over here is the representation of the scattering amplitude. So putting uh, this together with the representation in terms of partial waves that we found for the incident wave means that the scattering stationary states take on the following form. Okay, so this was the representation for the incident plane wave. Okay, 
and there's a PL cos theta over here. So we've essentially reduced the problem down to determining uh, this quantity over here, this AL. And you can see now that the reason for uh, adding in this extra factor of 12 plus one, this makes these two uh, look very similar and that'll be useful to us in trying to find the value for AL. Once we know what AL is, by this expansion over here, we know in principle what our scattering amplitude is and by extension what the differential cross section of our scattering process is. Uh, we need one more piece of information uh, from uh, some physical intuition uh, that we'll begin looking at in, in the next video. This is the concept of uh, phase shifts in the scattered wave function. This will allow us to um, develop uh, a solution for these factors AL.